Have you ever seen that old musical movie about a governess who takes care of a bunch of kids in Austria? It's filled with music, laughter, and a bit of danger as the family deals with some tough times. The main lady in it is quite popular for her singing and happy attitude, while the stern but lovable dad is played by another famous actor. There are lots of interesting stories about how they made that movie, some funny, some surprising, and some sad. It's really worth checking out if you're into classic films. So, who was your favorite actor in that old musical movie? Share your thoughts with us. Stay tuned for more fun facts and stories about it. The Sound of Music is a movie that came out in 1965. It's set in Austria just before World War II. The story is about a young woman named Maria who becomes a governess for a widowed naval captain's seven children. She brings music and joy back into their lives, even as the threat of war looms over their country. The main characters are Maria, the captain, and the seven children. Maria is a cheerful and musical young woman who loves to sing and play guitar. The captain is a strict but caring father who is struggling to raise his children alone. The children are a lively bunch with their own unique personalities. The movie was a big hit when it came out and won several awards, including five Oscars. It's known for its catchy songs and beautiful scenery. The Sound of Music has become a beloved classic that continues to be popular today. In the world of movies, there are tales that connect actors and locations, making the whole cinematic experience more interesting. One such story involves Christopher Plummer, who was honored by Canada for his acting in 1968. He starred in a movie where a beautiful castle served as a backdrop, which later appeared in another famous film featuring Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood. Julie Andrews, Plummer's co-star in The Sound of Music, surprised many by turning down a role in another film called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. People wondered why she made that choice. Maybe she wanted to try different kinds of roles beyond just singing and dancing. Andrews' talent keeps people fascinated wherever she goes, leaving a lasting impression on movie history. In short, the world of movies is full of interesting stories and surprising decisions that make us appreciate filmmaking even more. Christopher Plummer and Julie Andrews are just two examples of actors who leave their mark on audiences worldwide, showing us the magic of movies. And with that, we explore more tales from the world of cinema, connecting the dots between different movies and performances. Julie Andrews, well known for her memorable role in Mary Poppins, is one of 11 actresses who won an Oscar for singing in a movie. She turned down a part in Bedknobs and Broomsticks because it was too similar to Mary Poppins. Interestingly, the song Edelweiss from the musical isn't well known in Austria. It's noteworthy as it was the last song written by Oscar Hammerstein too before he passed away. Initially, Julie Andrews was considered for the Mary Poppins role, highlighting her versatility. In a movie starring Julie Andrews, her amazing singing really stands out. She's been singing beautifully since she was young. Did you know that the Americanization of Emily is the only black and white movie she's been in? Anna Lee, who was also in the movie, made some smart choices to be taken more seriously as an actress. For example, she dyed her hair dark for a long time. One of her costumes from Bedlam even ended up in the famous movie Gone with the Wind, showing how she made a big difference in the industry. In casting, Charmian Carr secured her role over Patty Duke, Mia Farrow, and Sharon Tate. Among the cast, a web of crushes emerged Heather Menzies fancied Nicholas Hammond, who admired Charmian Carr, who was infatuated with Christopher Plummer. Plummer, initially disliking Julie Andrews, later developed feelings for her. Christopher Plummer's influence extended to the Canadian postage stamp issued in his honor, where he played a key role in its design and approval. The stamp was released in booklets and panes, priced at CAN 95 cents per unit. Amidst the filming of a beloved movie, unexpected twists shaped its creation. The lead actress, set to flaunt her natural brown hair, faced a mishap when attempts at golden highlights turned her hair into a bright orange mess. To fix it, she got a shorter haircut, which later became her signature look. During filming, the real-life inspiration for one of the characters complimented another actor, saying he looked better than her late husband. This added an interesting dynamic to the set. In a lucky moment, a famous scene where the lead character sings while running had an unplanned stumble. The director liked it, seeing how it added to the character's nervous energy. The sun plan mistake ended up being in the final movie, blending seamlessly into the story. These stories give us a peek into what happened behind the scenes of this famous film. During the filming at Nonberg Abbey in Salzburg, the women in the cast and crew opted for skirts instead of trousers to avoid offending the resident nuns. This consideration reflected the attention to local sensitivities during the production. 
Julie Andrews, a key figure in the movie, stands among a select group of actresses who have earned an Academy Award for their performances in musicals. This distinguished list includes Rita Mulraino, Barbara Streisand, Liza Minnelli, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Jennifer Hudson, Anne Hathaway, and Emma Stone. In preparation for the film, director William Wyler took a proactive approach to historical accuracy. He met with the real Maria von Trapp and the mayor of Salzburg. Weiler, concerned about potential backlash, discussed the use of Nazi flags and stormtroopers in the streets with the mayor, fearing it might alarm the local residents. The mayor reassured him, drawing on the resilience of the Salzburgers who had endured the Anschluss years earlier. Some city officials, initially resistant to the idea, changed their stance when the filmmakers proposed using newsreel footage instead. This footage, while avoiding direct portrayal, ironically exposed the locals openly welcoming the Nazis contrasting with the film scenes. In navigating these challenges, the filmmakers balanced historical authenticity with local sensitivities, bringing the sound of music to life while respecting the community's complex history. Eleanor Parker, known for her role in The Sound of Music, stirred some on-set tension with co-star Charlton Heston during their collaboration in The Naked Jungle. Heston found Parker's insistence on top billing in the film to be irritating. Amidst the filming of The Sound of Music, Julie Andrews entertained the children in the cast by singing Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. At that time, the movie Mary Poppins hadn't been released, leading the young actors to believe Andrews had composed the whimsical song exclusively for them. A peculiar and delightful anecdote emerged when the real Maria Von Trapp made a television appearance alongside Julie Andrews. In this special, Maria taught Andrews how to yodel, a moment preserved on YouTube for curious viewers. And so, behind the scenes of the iconic film, interpersonal dynamics and moments of levity unfolded, shaping the collaborative experience for those involved. In the 1965 movie, several songs from the original show were dropped by screenwriter Ernest Lehman. Lehman believed that How Can Love Survive and No Way to Stop It weren't necessary and replaced an ordinary couple with something good. He thought audiences would sympathize with the Baroness if she sang, so her songs were cut, despite not evoking sympathy. How Can Love Survive is a duet between Elsa and Max reflecting on the opulence of the Baroness and the Captain. No Way to Stop It is a trio where Elsa and Max convince the Captain not to oppose the Nazis. During a 2010 Von Trapp reunion on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Kim Carruth recalled almost drowning during the overturning rowboat scene. She swallowed a lot of water and vomited on Heather. Julie Andrews performed Lonely Goatard and other hits from the movie on The Muppet Show in 1976. 